All right, so I was getting this engine ready to fire the other day, and I started topping off the radiator, and it started leaking. And that wasn't this radiator. That was a different radiator. And I noticed it had some, some gouges in it. And it was an old radiator out of an RX-7 I had laying around. So I threw it you know, in, the, in the scrap pile, and I grabbed this other radiator out of an RX-7, bolted it up, and uh, started filling it. And it's leaking right down here. And so I've got to replace this radiator. I may fix this one, but we'll see. The other one was gouged pretty bad, and I was just hoping it would hold. This one just has a little bit of a scrape on that bottom fitting there. <clears throat> but in the meantime, you know, I've got another radiator I could try. So I was getting ready to bolt this radiator on, and this mounting flange here that is typically soldered onto the intakes is loose. Uh, I've got it snapped, kind of fit in place, and it's holding really nice. I'm not going to take it loose, but I've got to braise these end pieces here to, on to, together. So I learned brazing a long time ago from a bunch of old guys. And as I was learning to braze, they didn't want me wasting good brazing rod. And so they taught me how to braze with a coat hanger. And so I've got an old coat hanger here. I'm going to nip that tip off so I have a nice straight piece to work with. And I'm going to see if I can braze this on with a torch. Because, I mean, it doesn't hurt to try, right? As it is, I can't use this radiator without this being attached because this is where it bolts on my frame. So let's see what I get. So the first thing I did was I took this piece off. Go ahead and take it off. And I cleaned the underlying metal with a wire brush. I cleaned the back side of the metal with wire brush. And I'm going to try to concentrate my heat on this piece here and on that little stub there and get the metal to flow inside of here. I really don't want to heat the end tank too much. I just want to make this bracket strong enough to hold the radiator. This is not going to be driving down the road. This is going to be on my stationary engine stand. So I'm not terribly concerned so long as it holds. Okay, so I've got about an inch here of flame. Oh, setting the foam on fire. You can see I've got that cone. The tip of the cone is right there on the where I'm trying to heat. The tip of the cone is going to be your hottest point. And you can see that's already starting to melt out there. That tells me that this was soldered. So let me change up here. I know I've got some old plumbing solder somewhere. I can't find it. So, you don't want to use electrical solder to solder this together. You want to use a structural solder like a plumbing solder. Um, and I have some. Oh, here it is right here, staring me in the face. So I'm gonna use this old, it's acid core solder. don't like how in that previous piece the solder tried to flow down away from where it was getting soldered. So I've got this little, set up a little more level now. Okay, the solder there in the middle is starting to melt a little bit. <clears throat> Feed a little more into it. I'd really like to get it hot enough to where it just draws it in. At the same time, I want to be careful of that intake and not get it too hot. The problem is the heat is not transferring from this top piece to this bottom piece to draw that solder in. It doesn't help the solder is about 50 years old. That 
solder is still liquid. There we go, it just turned back into a solid. Try this side again a little bit. Ugly doesn't matter if it holds, right? That's already re-solidifying there. Oh, no, no, it's not. All right. So, the end tank, or the end piece feels sturdy. I'm trying to twist it, and it's not really twisting too, too much. So I think that'll hold. All right, so there's the pinhole in this one. And it's not necessarily a pinhole, it's a pretty good leak. Let's see if I can fix it. There we go, got about an inch of flame. Got my solder. Got my flames growing. I want about an inch of flame, and I had about three inches there. I want to get this good and hot so it just sucks the solder right in. Solder's just kind of sitting on top at the moment. notice I'm not putting heat on the solder. I'm trying to heat up the area around the solder so the metal underneath gets hot and sucks the solder in. I'm not seeing it suck the solder in. That may be all I get out of it. I guess I'll find out. You do want to do this in a well-ventilated area. I've got a vent right overhead, and the, the I don't even have to turn the fan on that, and the smoke's going right for it. So I've got enough airflow through here right now with the door open.